With all the talks of possible recession, 2023 was a surprisingly good year for the stock market. With the S&P 500, the index comprised of 500 of the largest companies listed in the US, in particular ending the year up by 24.73%. It was pretty much the Magnificent 7 tech stocks driving these returns, with each of them up incredible amounts. Nvidia led the charge, but shareholders of any of these giants certainly won't be complaining about their 2023 returns. So with performance like that, many investors may be tempted to stay invested or to invest in an S&P 500 ETF for 2024. And that is certainly a tempting and perhaps obvious option. But in this video, I want to share five other ETFs that may present interesting investment opportunities for 2024. I do think that between these ETFs, there should be something of interest for everyone, no matter what your investing style or current worldview is. Before going through these five options though, I'll start off by looking at the current S&P 500 valuation as it is important to be aware of the reason as to why some investors are looking for alternative options, regardless of whether you agree with them or not. As always, remember these videos are not financial advice or recommendation to invest in any ETF featured. I'm simply giving a run through of some options available. Past performance does not guarantee future results and when investing, your capital is at risk. So firstly, to take a look at the current valuation of the S&P 500, I'll look at the forward price to earnings ratio. Forward price to earnings is simply the share price divided by forecast earnings per share. This is considered by most a better figure to look at than trailing price to earnings because it is forward looking and goes off expectations of what companies will earn. The higher the forward PE ratio, the more expensive a company or index is considered. This chart from Yardani Research is useful because it allows us to see where the forward PE ratio sits in relation to its historic mean. So the S&P 500 is ending the year with a forward PE of 19.6, and we can see that does look pretty expensive in comparison to its 20 year history. We can discount the 2020 to 2021 period when valuations went crazy, because that was due to some very unusual circumstances and lots of free money going around. So that isn't very typical. It looks like the historic 20 year mean is somewhere between 14 and 16. So yes, at 19.6, the S&P 500 certainly does look expensive from a forward price to earnings perspective. There's no rule saying that it can't get more expensive though. And it's also possible that the forward PE ratio reverts to mean without a drop in share prices because earnings are higher than expected. Although I'm not sure how likely that is. Anyway, I'm certainly not going to go as far as predicting that the S&P 500 will be a bad investment for 2024, but it is this 4 PE ratio that people are referring to when they say that the S&P 500 looks overvalued. It's also worth pointing out that much, if not all of this overvaluation, is tied to the high 4 PE ratios of the tech giants. I'll put them on screen now, and you'll clearly see that all of them have forward priced earnings above the S&P 500 valuation as a whole, with Tesla trading way above at a forward PE of 70.92. Together, these companies make up nearly 30% of the S&P 500, so it is clear to me that they're pushing the overall valuation of the index up and potentially masking some other value opportunities among large cap US stocks. It's clearly not as simple as all US stocks are expensive, and this leads me nicely on to the first ETF to consider for 2024, the iShares MSCI USA Value ETF, with the ticker IUVF. This ETF has an expense ratio of 0.2% and tracks US value shares via the MSCI USA Enhanced Value Index. So to get an idea of what kind of stocks it includes, let's take a brief look at the index fact sheet. We can see it contains large and mid-cap US stocks, but includes and weights them based on price to book value, price to forward earnings, and enterprise value to cash flow from operations. So basically what an ETF tracking this index allows us to do is invest in US equities in each sector proportionately whilst also avoiding those that are looking expensive. Scrolling down to the performance stats, yes, it has underperformed the standard MSCI USA in recent years, which for the purpose of this video can be considered almost equal to the S&P 500, but you can see that annually the enhanced value index has years of significant outperformance, such as in 2009, 2013, 2014, and 2016. With the S&P 500 looking expensive, could 2024 be a year of outperformance for US value stocks? It's impossible to know for sure, but an ETF tracking this index is certainly worth looking into if you are concerned about US stock valuations. Let's now switch to the ETF page to see how the holdings currently break down. And firstly, looking at the sector breakdown, it retains sector neutrality. So this is broadly similar to an S&P 500 ETF with tech having the largest weighting, followed by financials, healthcare, and consumer discretionary. However, where the difference is very clear is when we switch to looking at the top 10. You'll see there's not a single Magnificent 7 member in sight, with two different tech companies actually having the highest weightings, Intel and Cisco. 
Whilst you probably will still recognise most of these names, it's certainly very different to what we're used to seeing in US ETFs. Lastly, it's worth noting that this ETF has shown some signs of life recently and did actually outperform the S&P 500 in December. This was in response to news that the Federal Reserve may cut rates sooner than expected. If there continues to be good news surrounding interest rates, perhaps this ETF has much further to climb. Overall, for those who are bullish on the US but worried about the valuation of big tech, I do think IUVF is worth looking into for 2024. The mention of possible US interest rate cuts is very relevant to the next ETF I'll look at. It's another US ETF that investors will benefit from investing in if rate cuts go ahead in 2024. It's the iShares S&P Small Cap 600 with the ticker ISP6. It has an expense ratio of 0.4% and it's a distributing ETF meaning it pays out dividends. The difference with this ETF compared to the last is that this one grants exposure to small cap companies via tracking the S&P 600 Small Cap Index. Small caps are very responsive to interest rate news, due to high rates impacting them proportionally more than large cap companies. This responsiveness was seen in December when ISP6 saw gains of 9.53% compared to only 4.22% for S&P 500 tracking ETF VUSA. So if you're dovish on US interest rates in 2024, US small caps are certainly worth looking into. There are a couple of ways of investing in US small caps, but the reason I prefer the S&P 600 over the Russell 2000 is because of the profitability filter that the S&P 600 applies. This means you avoid some of the potential junk small cap stocks in the Russell 2000, and what's more, the data is clear that the S&P 600 does tend to outperform the Russell 2000 more often than not. Alongside the responsiveness of small cap stocks to rate cuts, another reason why the S&P 600 presents an interesting opportunity for 2024 is because, unlike the S&P 500, it currently looks very cheap and has a forward price to earnings way below its historic mean. This is shown on another chart by Yardani Research, and whilst it has gone up a fair amount since the good news in December, it clearly still has an attractive valuation. It's worth pointing out that these valuations are more often than not the other way around. The S&P 600 tends to have a more expensive valuation than the S&P 500. So if you do like the idea of reversion to mean, and you think interest rate cuts will go ahead in 2024, an S&P 600 ETF is certainly one to look further into. That's the investment case for the S&P 600, but I'll now quickly put on screen how it breaks down. Due to these companies being small, it's very unlikely you'll have heard of them, so there's not much to discuss here. But there will be a link in the description for you to check out the holdings yourself. Overall, I do think ISP6 is an exciting investment opportunity in 2024, and for full transparency, as those who watch my portfolio updates already know, I do hold this ETF in my portfolio. Before revealing the next ETF, if you're looking to start your own ETF investing journey in 2024 or are looking to move to a lower cost platform in the new year, I'd highly recommend Invest Engine. Invest Engine is currently my favourite platform for investing in ETFs. They have over 590 to choose from, including all of the ETFs featured in this video. And their zero fees for their DIY stocks and shares ISA makes it a super cost effective choice. I transferred my ISA to them in April last year and I've been very happy with my decision. It is amazing that a low to zero cost platform can offer so many amazing features such as one click rebalancing and detailed analytics alongside great customer support. If you like the sound of Invest Engine, you can get a welcome bonus of up to £50 when you sign up via the link in my description and invest £100 of your own money. A big thank you to anyone who does use that link. And as always, remember when investing, your capital is at risk. I've gone through two alternative USA ETFs so far, but I'm now going to cross the pond and look at what the UK stock market has to offer. Over the past five years, the UK stock market has not really had much going for it, and the FTSE 350 of large and mid-cap UK stocks has only increased by 12.96%. This does not include the good dividend payments that UK stocks offer, but even so, the total return for UK stocks has been very underwhelming. However, could 2024 be the year that UK stocks finally offer some decent returns? Well, as we've looked at valuations for US stocks, I'll now show how UK stocks are looking. And using this chart that shows the forward PE ratio for MSCI UK, an index that tracks the performance of large and mid-cap UK stocks, we can see that the forward PE, as of the end of 2023, was only 10.8. That is of course much lower than the S&P 500 and even the S&P 600, but you can't really compare valuations of UK stocks to US stocks, as there are so many other differences to consider there. What we can do though, is look at how UK stocks sit in relation to their own historic mean. And by doing that, it is clear that they are looking very cheap. The last time valuations were this low was during that initial COVID dip in 2020, and before that, they haven't been this cheap since 2013. We do have to remember that stocks are cheap for a reason though, 
And in the case of the UK, it's mainly due to a lot of pessimism about the state of the economy and investors seeing better opportunities elsewhere. However, although far from being a conclusive sign of a turnaround, the UK has also had some better than expected inflation data in recent months. And like in the US, if good news surrounding inflation and implied interest rates continues, it could mean that we see a resurgence in cheap UK stocks with a lot of room to grow. The problem with investing in the UK for a standard market cap weighted ETF like a FTSE 100 tracker though, is that there are a lot of low growth mature companies included that are cheap for a reason and can very well remain cheap for a long time. Some constituents are unlikely to offer investors much return at all and may possibly represent a value trap. British American Tobacco, for example, is one of the largest constituents in the FTSE 100 and has looked cheap from a PE ratio perspective for a very long time now. But due to operating in a declining industry, the share price just keeps on falling. It's the perfect example of a mature UK company that has a low 4 PE ratio for a reason. Due to this problem with market cap weighted UK ETFs, if I wanted to benefit from the cheap valuation of UK stocks at the moment, I'd go for the newly launched Wisdom Tree UK Quality Dividend Growth ETF with the ticker UGRW. It has an expense ratio of 0.29% and at the moment there is only a distributing version. My reason for picking this fund is because it helps solve the problem of standard UK ETFs by applying a quality and momentum filter that means only the best UK companies are included. Wisdom Tree's quality dividend growth methodology has been proven through their other funds available. They've all been able to beat the applicable standard trackers. This is perhaps the most exciting ETF option on the list for me because by filtering out all the low quality UK companies, this ETF may finally represent a good way to invest in the UK stock market. And whilst it was only released in November, so we have almost no past performance data to go off, in its very brief history, it has outperformed other UK ETF options. I'll put the holdings and sector breakdown on screen now, so feel free to pause and have a look at it yourself, but I'll not go into too much detail, as I will be doing a full breakdown of this ETF soon. In the meantime, I'll leave a link in the description to a video from Ian Shadrach, who has already covered it. He's well worth checking out. So overall, if you think the valuations of UK stocks makes them attractive at the moment, and you're confident that some Bank of England rate cuts are coming, I personally think UGRW is the best UK ETF option to consider. I've done the US and the UK, but now I'm going to look at an ETF that offers geographical diversification and invests in stocks from 20 developed countries. The Vanek Morningstar Developed Markets Dividend Leaders, with the ticker TDGB. This ETF has an expense ratio of 0.38%, and through the Morningstar index it tracks, it provides investors exposure to 100 of the top dividend payers globally, selected for their dividend yields, resilience, and likely growth. With a dividend yield of 4.29%, this ETF might be a great choice for those who love dividends and think that other unloved sectors may shine in 2024, as the big dividend payers tend to be in the sectors that have much cheaper valuations. And you'll see that by the fact it is very concentrated in financials. But really, the incentive here with this ETF is that whilst you're waiting for these cheap stocks to possibly have an increase in share price, you'll benefit psychologically from receiving very attractive dividend payments. Looking at the fundamentals of the ETF to show what I mean about these dividend stocks being cheap, we can see that it has a very cheap trailing price to earnings ratio of only 8.88 and a price to book of 1.14. For reference, a standard developed markets ETF has around double these valuation figures. Moving on to the country weightings, we can see it is much more spread out geographically, with the US massively underweight at only 23% of the fund, and there's significant overweight given to a number of countries here. So another potential reason to consider this ETF for 2024 is if you're wanting global exposure, but not wanting to give too much weight to the US. Here's the top 10 holdings on screen now, and feel free to pause, but what I really want to show with this ETF is the great total returns that can be offered by investing in well-selected companies with significant dividends. To do this, I'll show the performance chart on just ETF. We can see that without dividends, over the past five years, the return of the fund has only been around 38%. However, when dividends are included, this return almost doubles to over 70%. I think this is an aspect that people don't really consider when comparing funds using charts on Google Finance, for example. If I'd have only done that, I may have very much underappreciated the impact of dividend payment. And for that reason, I do highly recommend using just ETF to compare ETFs. Anyway, overall, I hope that performance chart shows that not all dividend ETFs offer terrible total returns. And I think TDGB could represent a great choice for those who want to invest in cheaply valued global stocks, love dividends, and are seeking diversification away from big US tech stocks in 2024. 
For the fifth and final ETF in this video, I'm going to go against the running theme of avoiding expensive stocks. And this is one for those who believe the winners of 2023 will keep on winning. It's the X Trackers MSCI World Momentum ETF with the ticker XDEM, and it has an expense ratio of 0.25%. For those wanting a detailed look at the momentum factor, be sure to check out my video on the topic. But put simply, this ETF seeks to track the performance of the recent winners in 23 developed countries, and the idea behind momentum is that stock market winners do tend to keep on winning in the near term. Although, of course, that's not always the case. I made a poll recently asking which factor would perform best in 2024, and momentum was the clear winner. So it'll be interesting to see if you all got it right. I do agree that we shouldn't just be writing off the good performers of 2023 because they have expensive valuations. They may well beat earnings expectations and lower their PE ratios that way, or alternatively, they may just keep on getting more expensive in line with investor sentiment. As this is a developed markets ETF, it will not only provide you exposure to the stock market winners in the US, but also many other developed countries. And you can see this in the country breakdown with around 52% in the US, but then the other half of the fund split between a number of countries. Looking at the top 10, you'll see a number of those big tech companies such as Nvidia, Meta and Amazon. But you can also see winners in other sectors, as well as the best performers from European countries and Japan. Unlike the other ETFs in this video, it's certainly not one for those who worry too much about valuations, as you can see on the index fact sheet. So if you're bullish about the winners of 2023, but want a more global exposure rather than just S&P 500 companies, this ETF may well be for you. I do hold it in my own portfolio at a 15% allocation, as I like to give myself more of a multi-factor approach to investing. So that's five ETFs to consider for 2024. There's a good mix, and whilst there's no way of knowing for sure if there'll be winners, I can see a good investment case being made for all of them. And before I wrap up, it's worth reiterating that this is not a recommendation to invest in any of the options featured, but it should hopefully give you some ideas to look further into. Many people may choose to remain fully invested in either an S&P 500 or standard global market tracking ETF. However, if any of the ETFs have interested you, be sure to let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Have I missed out any other exciting opportunities? That is it for this one. If you like learning about little discussed exciting ETF options, you might want to check out these videos on screen now. I've also recently launched an ETF cheat sheet that allows you to compare the best ETFs available for UK investors. To gain your access, all you need to do is sign up to my newsletter by the link in the description. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on that, but for now, as always, thank you for watching.